Hi guys, welcome to part three of this video series where we're making this signet ring. Uh, we have just completed um, you know, making the, the, the base shape of the signet ring. We've not only from the uh, front but also from the side. We've got these sides uh, taken care of and now what we're left with is hollowing out the ring and uh, we'll see if we can get that done in, in, this, in part three here. So the first thing that we want to do is bring back our shape, the basic shape that we made the ring out of, and we want to offset that uh, inside. So we're going to go to the surface tools and choose offset surface, and you see the arrows are pointing out. We need them pointing in, so we can either click in, uh, click on the surface, or you can click on flip all. Either way, just make sure those arrows are pointing in. We're going to give it a thickness of 0.8, so if it doesn't say 0.8 already, click on distance and then type in 0.8 and then hit enter uh, to finish out the command. So uh, I'm going to hide the purple uh, layer again and also I want to make a duplicate of the ring in case I need to get back to the unhollowed version of it. So I'm going to right click on the purple layer and click on copy objects to layer. So now there's a copy of that ring also on the purple layer. Um, I'm going to move this to the red layer and we'll call this red layer cutters. And I should be naming my, my layers. Uh, we'll call purple the purple layer duplicates. I'm just keeping all my duplicates there. And the blue layer has my curves, so I'm going to call that layer curves. Okay, so um, did, I, did I make a copy? It looks like I made a copy of that cutter. That's not what I meant to do in this particular case. I'm making copies to the purple layer, but not to the other layers. Uh, this is not meant to be a duplicate. Okay, um, I'm going to turn the cutter layer off for now, and we're going to talk about how far in we want to come. So I want to give the customer a full millimeter of contact of metal, and the finger rail, the top of the finger is here, I think. Let me go into here we'll click snap a line to right there and then I'll coming into the right view I'll hold down shift so this is the top of the finger right here and we could probably come back to say here the customer is probably feeling contact maybe even this far back with the metal but I'm going to I want a guaranteed one millimeter of contact so we want to start uh, we, we can't be as sure of that until we get to this point right here. So I'm going to take a line starting right there. I'll come into the side view and I'll point that down. And um, I'll offset that line one millimeter. So this is where I want the hollow to start, but there's one more problem. If I'll bring that red layer back up. Um, I'll kind of draw a rough line. If we start from here, you know, our hollow is going to kind of follow this shape here. And so the hollow will come down and then come in. And you can see there's a very sharp point there. And I want to come back quite a bit. Uh, so uh, if we pull up a circle and give it a radius of 0.7. I would like to come back like that. Oh, that might be a little too much. You know, in the speed model, I did 0.5, and I just didn't feel like that was enough. But it looks like it might be 0.5. So actually, okay, I see what the problem is here. So let me pull that 0.7 radius circle up again. So we will be coming not this way, but we'll be coming this way uh, as we blend from this surface to that surface. So yes, I want to come back a full 0.7 millimeters on my radius when I fill it that edge there. And you can see now, instead of having a, a millimeter of contact, we're going to be having this little distance here, which is not nearly as much. So that's 0.3 uh, distance right there. So what we need to do 
is uh, we'll need to add this 0.7 millimeters here. So we'll need to come 1.7 millimeters in from this line, 1.7. You come all the way back to here. So what that's gonna do is, uh, you know, we're gonna, our, our surface is gonna go kind of like this for our hollow, kind of like this. And uh, then we're gonna come back 0.7 from there and then our, our fillet is gonna be about here. So just roughly, just drawing it in roughly, about, about like that, a little better than that. So this is about the shape we're gonna end up with. And uh, we'll have about a millimeter of real contact with the metal from here to here. The customer will feel a little bit more because they're probably gonna start feeling the contact back here. And that's good. Uh, but the more metal that their finger is contacting, uh, the more comfortable uh, this is going to be. So I like to give them a, a, a full one millimeter's worth of contact. And I wasn't careful about that in the speed model video. I tried to be, but in the end it, it, it didn't work out. But I didn't really think too much about it uh, for that video. So right here, I need to leave that line. This is the line that is going to determine where we cross over right here. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So just kind of visually coming up like that. We want our a line about here. And if you see me draw a line, I don't know if I've already talked about this. You know, I'm not going over and grabbing the line tool. Uh, I've got a gamer's uh, number pad with a, you can program the keys and I've programmed the line tool. I've programmed lots of stuff into it. But the ones I use the most that'll matter to you is the line and the mirror command. So I can also run the mirror command uh, from the gamer's keypad I've got. And uh, so you may not see me grab the line here, or you may see that I've run the mirror command, but I don't come over and grab the mirror command here. So I apologize about that. Uh, I just wanted to explain that. So I'm running, I'm going to run a line from here on the other side of the half, you know, of the middle here. And we're going to blend between these two using the curve blend tool. I'm gonna blend from here to here. And uh, one more thing I wanna do, we will turn off the red layer. Again, I just wanna make sure that we're coming in all the way around 1.7 millimeters like that. So we're gonna grab offset curve from surface. I'm gonna select this edge, which will work just like a curve. And uh, we wanna make sure that the arrow is pointing in so I'm going to click flip and I'm going to do uh, through point. Uh, so that line I clicked on, we could also have done that. And um, I'm sorry, click that edge and uh, flip the arrows and then type in 1.7 that that also would have worked. So I'm going to move this to the green layer just so we can tell the difference between this curve and this curve when we're in the side view. And we, we just want to make sure that our curve doesn't cross under this curve, which is what it's doing right here is crossing under that curve. And it's doing it barely, so it probably doesn't matter. We could probably get away with that. This is just a rough guide, but let's, uh, let's assume it really mattered. And... Um, so we're just adjusting this until we get a result that doesn't cross back over that curve. Okay, and then um, we're gonna mirror this over and we just wanna make sure that uh, these lines, uh, they're not too far under the halfway point here, which they, uh, the halfway point this way, which they are. Um, so this looks good and I don't need this green line anymore. I'm going to delete that. And now we're going to bring back that red, uh, cutter here and we're going to use, um, wire cut to trim it with these two lines. And then I'm going to hide these, move these curves over to the curves layer and I don't need these. So we'll delete those and I don't need this anymore. So I'll delete that. I do want to make a duplicate of this shape in case I want to get back to this shape on the purple layer. 
All right, and then uh, just temporarily, I'm going to hide the ring itself. And we're gonna give this a fillet of 0.5 all the way around. So this is just gonna make, when we hollow it out, it's gonna make it be, you know, give it some soft softness up in there. And also, um, this will make cleaning, uh, finishing out the ring easier. Anywhere where you can have a, a rounded area uh, finishing will be easier than a sharp, a sharp uh, corner. So bring that ring back. Um, we want the hollow to gently leave the ring like this, and to accomplish that, we're gonna we're gonna grab this and click on go to transform and click on cage edit, bounding box world, and make sure uh, they should be all like four 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 for X Y and Z. But you want to change Z to five. We want five control points in this direction. You don't absolutely have to have five. I just prefer to have that extra little control down here at the end, just to give it some extra curvature down here. So we're just grabbing these control points. Now I'm going to grab the neck, the bottom two layers, and just scaling them in. And I just want this hollow to be a little bit above the halfway line here. And this is for the jeweler's sake. Not absolutely necessary. You can make this hollow come out anywhere you want, even way down here if you wish. But um, you know the jewelers are going to appreciate being able to hammer because uh, if, if this gets bent or if it needs to be sized, they'll end up having to hammer, uh, and they'll put this ring on a steel mandrel and they'll they'll hammer against it. And you cannot hammer wherever there is a hollowed section. So not even here. If you hammer there, you'll end up denting the metal. Uh, so here you can hammer because there is, you know, it'll be contacting the steel all, and it'll be solid all the way through. So the closer you can hammer up to the halfway point, uh, probably on this ring you wouldn't want to go past here. Uh, hammering, um, the more the happier the jeweler will be. <laughs> At least in my experience with uh, working with jewel with jewelry, you know, hands on with the actual physical jewelry, which I only have about a year's experience. Uh, my father was a master jeweler. And I was his assistant in two different jewelry stores uh, for the span of about six months at one and maybe three to five months at the other. Um, so I have a little under a year's worth of experience actually working with the jewelry uh, in the metal. Okay, so uh, we're done with this and we're just going to go ahead and Boolean that out. So we're going to select this and then under solid tools, we're going to do Boolean difference. Click on that. And we'll hide the red layer. And now we've got this hollowed out, but we've got this very sharp edge right here. And we'll need to uh, take care of that. So from the side view, again, you can see it's a very sharp edge, almost like a knife edge. And we're gonna round that out. Now that's gonna take uh, some time to do that. So we're gonna do that in, in part four. So, uh, again, if you, if you are enjoying this content, uh, and this is a, the kind of thing that you'd like to see, Please give me a subscription and a thumbs up if you're liking this video. I would really appreciate that. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this, uh, watching my videos, and we'll see you again in part four.